Well, I kind of want to see the. That's better. Ah, uh, that's fine. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello. Good evening. It's quiet. <laughs> <clears throat> the intro actually sounded, not the intro, but, I don't know, the the Sierra logo part was really, really loud. But then the title screen here didn't sound that loud when it did the bop bum bum doo 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 So, I guess we'll have to see what the opening sounds like when we get to King. King's Quest 6. This was my very first King's Quest and my favorite. Although I do like 5 and 7 a lot. A lot. <clears throat> and no, it's not because of... What's his name? Frederick? <laughs> I love owls, but Frederick is the exception. Just waiting for my husband to say hello. I don't know if he even knows I've started. <clears throat> <clears throat> but I guess I'll go ahead and start the opening, and I'll watch the audio levels, but I won't fix, well, I guess I could try to fix it while it's running, because it, ah, uh, the audio still plays when I tab out, so, we'll see. Alright, here we go. I hope it's not too loud. I'm sorry if it is. Long ago, in the castle of a kingdom called Daventry. Alexander, here you are. Oh, you're still not thinking about Cosima. Hmm? Oops. Ah! I suppose I am. Son, it's been months. You've got to pull yourself together. After all, you only met her that once. I know. Have you discovered anything about the land of the Green Isles? No. <clears throat> no one's even heard of it. It's like she's just vanished. I wish I could help. Please try to think about something else, dear. I'll try, Mother. in the mirror. In the mirror? The magic mirror? Yes. And it showed me <laughs> how to find her. How? The stars. I saw the stars outside her window. I can navigate by the stars. Oh, Alexander, if you really go... It will be all right, Mother. I promise. Three long 
Prince Alexander sailed the known seas and beyond. Alexander awakens to find himself on an unfamiliar beach. For a moment, he is too dazed to remember how he got here. Then, he does remember. The shipwreck. The sea. Just as he had seen his men safely into the lifeboats, a gigantic wave picked him up and tossed him overboard into the churning sea. That was the last he'd seen of his crew. Debris from the shipwreck is scattered along the shore, but of the lifeboats and his men, there is thankfully no trace. He can only hope and pray that the lifeboats survived the currents and that his men made their way safely back to Devontree. All right. <clears throat> There's no music here, so... Just let me know if the music ever gets too loud and you can't hear me talking, or... You can't hear the sound over me talking. <laughs> Either way. Um, I don't think I've seen that intro since I was six. <laughs> or, not six, like I said, eight. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Does it sound good? Okay, thank you. Alexander picks up his royal insignia ring from the beach. Also, we need to adjust his... Walking levels. <laughs> he walks so slow. Um, let's see. There are two ways to beat this game. There's an easy, short way and a long, harder way. I actually have no idea how to do the short way. Alexander I've never done it. pushes the plank to one side. A box has been partially buried under sand. I've only ever done it the long way, and it's really good. I love doing it the long way. 
Alexander takes the coin and leaves the ruined box where it is. <clears throat> I'm too pro for that. <laughs> I don't know. It's just I had watched my brothers beat it. I don't even know how I know the solutions to all this. Oh, oh shit. By the way, I'll have to, um, if I get to the Cliffs of Logic, um, I'll have to uh, look up the manual because it has information on how to beat the Cliffs of Logic that you can't just do by playing the game. It's not just skipping the... It, it's... Uh, instead of using Beauty's dress to put the fire out at the druid's place, you put the dress on and pretend to be her and go into the castle. So you're skipping seeing the druid, you're skipping going to the dead, uh, you're skipping a lot of stuff. <laughs> so. Yay. Yeah, you never go to the underworld. I know how to start the short part with the dress, but after that I have no idea what to do once you get inside the castle. It's like my brothers did it once, and then I never saw it again. We couldn't figure out what to do. There's like a painting or something that you took off, and you took a nail. I don't know, I, I just can't remember. Good day! <clears throat> I've always loved the music in this game. And I don't know, uh, do you guys want to hear all of the backstory and all this because I hardly ever actually talk to the people I just do what I need to do and get on my way <laughs> so uh, if you guys want to actually hear a lot of the story because we'll miss a lot of the story if we play it the way I play it so if you guys want me to actually talk to people I'll do it I wanted to play a game that had voices after voicing Undertale <laughs> <clears throat> Speed running. <laughs> I'm not a pro. I just wanted to know. I just know that I'm not going to do much of the story. Or if anyone has questions, you can ask me a question. I can try to answer it. Uh, <laughs> now I'm all nervous if I'm even supposed to do anything. Alexander takes a mint. <clears throat> I won't ever skip things that are being said, though. If I initialize speech. And I know there's an issue with the Nightingale scene. For some reason, this version of the game that I have doesn't want to play out. I think the second time you give a gift to the... Nightingale. Can you tell me, merchant, what the value of this ring might be? <clears throat> By the sands of the sea, what a beauty! What fine gold and masterful artistry! This ring is quite valuable, sir. I would not feel right taking it in trade. None of the items on display at my humble store are even close to the value of this ring. Are you serious? Well, it would be hard to part with it anyway, I suppose. That is so cool. Hello, I want your items. Alexander takes a closer look at the items on the counter. I'm interested in that flute on the counter. What do you desire to give me in trade? The items on the front counter are all of equally slight value. Worth only a copper or two. They are handy items, nonetheless. Oh, I forgot. I give him... I have this copper coin. Is it of any value to you at all? 
Hmm, most interesting. I have never seen a Daventry coin before, but it is copper genuine enough. I might even find a buyer who is interested in foreign currency. The items on the front counter are the only things in the store that I can let go for the price of one copper. You may make your choice from there. Alexander looks at the items on the counter to make his selection. <clears throat> Hmm. No, I don't even remember what I need first. I don't need the paintbrush for a long time. Nor that. I'll that mechanical paint. nightingale looks intriguing. I believe I'll take it. Very well. Your coin is well spent. Remember, this is a pawn shop. I am always willing to take back my own goods in trade. I'll remember. Thank you. <clears throat> this was the first um, time I ever heard of a pawn shop. <laughs> I never, I had never heard of a pawn shop, and I didn't even know they were real, <laughs> even after playing this game. <laughs> Hello, I will be right up. I think these are the VGA now, portraits. What can I do for you? I think. I like the old portraits better, though. Alexander picks up the book from the small table. Oh, yes, please take that book. You have my most humble thanks for doing so good, sir. Really? Thanks. <clears throat> Thinking of Cosima, Alexander decides to leaf through one of the volumes of love poetry. He reads, Thy hair, thy lips, thy beauteous face, and all thy studied female grace have won for thee anon a place within this broken breast. Not bad. And another. Upon the shore the lilies bend, untouched by worldly care, where shadow they her earthly bed. Oh, that she were not there. Yikes. And <laughs> another. What was it when I looked at you? What power has chained me through and through and binds my heart with links so tight I cannot live without the sight of you? What nameless thing has captured me and made me powerless to flee? What thing is it without a name that brings my mind e'er back the same to thee? The name of love cannot apply. Its commonness does not decry the haunted, hunted, painful cry that my heart makes for you, that e'er my soul eternal makes for you. Hmm. A little close to home, that one. Alexander returns the love poem book to the shelf. <coughs> Alexander picks up the fallen page. It's the love poem he particularly liked. It must have fallen out of the poetry book. I see that old volume has lost another page. You may keep it if you like, sir. I have glued the stubborn thing back in place two times already. I do rather like it. Thank you, merchant. <clears throat> Shamir Shamazel. He's one of my favorite characters. <laughs> We're going to try to get through it without him dying, but I always forget to do one thing. And it has to do with the nightingale and all that crap. An antique leather-bound book is displayed on a little stand on the counter. On the elaborate cover is the title, Ye Useful Book of Magic Spells. How much for that book on the counter, merchant? It is a fine book, is it not? I obtained it from the estate of the one and only magician this kingdom has ever had. Poofed himself into an aardvark in the end, or so I heard. I never found the spells all that useful myself, but then I lead a boring life. I tell you what. If you can find another rare book, something a bit more marketable, 
I might be willing to exchange the spell book for it. <clears throat> Sorry, that <laughs> he had stopped talking just as I sent that, but I know she's in King's Quest V. I can't remember if she makes, meets Alexander, though. I think I do need Good to day again. How may I help you? I think I do need to talk to them. Alexander would have to read the books to hear what they have to say. What? <laughs> Good day, merchant. Can you tell me what land this is? Why, certainly. This is the Isle of the Crown, the main isle of the land of the Green Isles. Thank the fates. I knew I was close when we sank, but I dared not hope. Tell me, how fair is your Princess Cosima? The princess? She is well enough, I suppose. Is she near? The castle of the crown on the hill, sir. And good luck. <laughs> oh no, I'm so offended. I think I've got to talk to the pawn. I guess I have to talk to them anyways. I guess I skipped through the text. Good day. Good day, merchant. What can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? I can tell you she is in a dark time. Without the ferry, communication between the islands has ground to a halt, and so nearly has my business. Why the long ages of peace have ended, and why the crown has not done something about it is beyond me. But then, I am a shopkeeper, not a politician, and can only hope for better days. I'm actually going to try talking to the ferryman first. I think I talked to the ferryman and then him. Double click does nothing. This song I actually have on my MP3 player. <laughs> A better version of it. It's in a window, so it's hard to, uh... <clears throat> click on the, the edges of the screen. Oh wait, the guy's not here. I must not be able to come here yet. So much for speed running. <laughs> Good day. Oh, I didn't mean to skip that, but I did. Sorry. How bide you, good merchant? Quite well, though a purchase would not hurt me any. Don't jump off a cliff. How bide you, good merchant? Quite well. Hmm. <sighs> good day again. What can you tell me there about the land of the Green Isles? That is a big question, young man. Uh, perhaps you will be so kind as to first tell me who you are and what exactly you want to know. My name is Alexander. You said that this is the Isle of the Crown, but I'd like to know whatever else you can tell me about this island and if there are other islands nearby. 
This island is called the Isle of the Crown because the royal family's castle is here. Besides the castle, we also have this village and the docks over to the west. There are at least three other islands, the Isle of the Sacred Mountain, the Isle of the Beast, and the Isle of Wonder. At least three? Does no one know for certain? <laughs> this is no ordinary land, Alexander. The land of the Green Isles has always been a place of vague boundaries, as if islands come and go. Legend speaks of a fourth island, an isle shrouded in mists. I myself have never seen it. Then, too, the land of the Green Isles is said to exist on the boundaries of this world and the next. Even darker places are reputed to be closer here than anywhere else in the world. That's quite a claim. <laughs> claim, yes, but probably just local superstition. We who live here on the Isle of the Crown, at least, sleep well enough at night. Those first three islands you mentioned, how might I learn more about them? Ideally, a young man seeking such knowledge would travel to their shores and learn about them firsthand. Meeting the leaders of each place would be helpful, naturally. Unfortunately, the ferry no longer runs between the islands. There has been much political unrest, and it has been too dangerous to travel for years. Perhaps the ferryman can tell you more. He has little enough to do these days. And if you haven't been there already, you might seek an audience at the castle. Thank you kindly, merchant, for all your good advice. Ah, but advice is free, Alexander. Making use of it costs much more. <clears throat> All right. Gotta get out of here. Oh, come on. Come on. Don't make me click outside the window. Ah. Come join me. The water is wonderful, and I can show you the way to the next island. All right, let's jump in. <laughs> Come on, jump in. A little water won't hurt you. What are you waiting for? I said I'd show you how to get to the next island, didn't I? The deaths are amazing. Whoa! That's strange. The young boy in the water just disappeared. Oh well, perhaps he just dove under the water. I didn't click anything. He just didn't talk. Yeah, what do you want? Alright, Popeye, let me in. Alexander promises him. Not talk to yourself. Excuse me. My name is Alexander. The owner of the bookshop in the village told me you might <clears> be able to help me. I hear you used to run this ferry for the islands. I'd like to talk to you if you have a moment. You say old Ali sent you? I can't see why. The ferry's not running, you know. I understand. I'd just like to talk to you about the islands if you don't mind. Well, I guess it'd be all right if Ali sent you. Well, don't just stand there. Come on inside. What is it you wanted to talk about, young man? I see you have a rabbit's foot. Has it brought you much luck? As you can see, my luck's been out for some time now, despite that old charm. Why don't you take it with you? Perhaps giving the darn thing away will bring me good fortune at last. Perhaps it will at that. Thank you. I'm a visitor to these islands. I'd like to learn what I can about the area. So you said outside. What is it you want to know? Well, for one thing, why has the island's only ferry been dry docked? Huh. 
It just ain't safe to sail these days, what with the islands feuding and all. Wazir al Hazred ordered the ferry closed till things settled down. Me, I don't think she'll ever see water again. <sighs> but why are the islands feuding? You got me. Something about stolen property or some such thing. Tis a real shame. Things used to be so friendly. Then this unrest is recent. A few years is all, but it's been long enough. Perhaps if the ferry were repaired. This old thing? This ferry's been out of water so long she's no longer even seaworthy. Her boards have dry rot. She'd fall apart at the first taste of seawater. But there must be some way to get off this island. There's only one other way to travel that I know of. A magic map. The owner of the pawn shop can tell you more about that than I can, Alexander. All right, let's get out of here. Well, I think I'll be going now. Thanks for allowing me into your home. Posh, not at all. It breaks the boredom, if you know what I mean. <sighs> oh, come on. Yay. <laughs> Are you sure you have nothing of value for which I can trade this ring? No, I cannot think of it. <sighs> the pawn shop. No, don't look at Excuse me, merchant, but the ferryman mentioned that you might have a magic map of the land of the Green Isles. Why, as a matter of fact, I do. I keep it under the counter. It's been gathering dust so long that I nearly forgot about it. It was quite a few years ago, you see. The estate of a wealthy wizard fell into my hands when he died. It was useless magical junk mostly, which reminds me, I've still got some things of his in the back that I need to dump out. Anyway, the magic map was the one true treasure in the lot. The wizard was quite old and feeble and had enchanted the map to aid in traveling. It is said that one need only desire to be on an island depicted on the map to find oneself there. It is a very valuable map, as you can imagine. Unfortunately, no one is interested in traveling these days. It is far too dangerous with the current state of the kingdom. What would you take for the map? I would normally want something magic in return, but since I am hardly overrun with prospective buyers, I would be willing to take anything of equal value in exchange. So he lied to me and he does have something. It equals the value of my ring. Would you be willing to take my family ring in exchange for the magic map? Daventry, are you a king then? No, that's my father, King Graham. I'm just Alexander. Well, Prince Alex, she is a beautiful ring. Are you sure you can part with such a unique family heirloom? The ring does mean a lot to me. I didn't always have a family, you know. Still... It is only gold. There are more important things at stake now. Then you now own a magic map, Prince Alex. I will keep your ring out of sight for a few days. If you find anything else of great value in your travels, you can come back for your ring. I would hate to see it melted down for gold. Ah, and a warning about the map. It will only operate when you are out in the open and within sight of the sea. The limitation has something to do with the teleport spell ingredients. You might try the beach. Thank you. You are very kind. And I'll remember about the map. Suddenly, the old man in the concealing cloak sneaks past Alexander and with a sneaky dart of his hand, steals a mint from the candy jar. The old man stuffs the mint into his mouth and wobbles unsteadily out of the pawn shop. Willie Beamish? I've never heard of that. Maybe I'll try to stream it. If I can find it. <laughs> Master! 
I was a smurfling <laughs> in the village as you wished. And I saw a manger. I don't know. A danger? No, no, no. A stranger there. He says, oh, he's Prince Blab and Tander of Slavatry. Sounds like a... You fool! You've been eating those mints again! I ordered you to stop that! Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> now, who did this stranger say he was? Prince Salamander of Pantantry! I <laughs> think... You idiot! Are you trying to tell me that Prince Alexander of Daventry is here? Confound it! That's the young man Cosima met at Mordak's castle. The timing could not be worse. Tell me, what is he doing? He was in the pawn shop buying a magic... <gasps> smap! Magic smap? What is this magic smap? With the smap? He can travel to other islands. Master. That's a map, you don't! Oh, drat it all. I thought I took care of the only means of travel. By my scimitar. I can't have him stirring things up. Not now! Get a hold of yourself and listen carefully, Shamir. Go to the other islands and tell them... Ah, there's so much talking. I don't remember this talking. And what's it called? The Isle of Wisdom? Let's see. The magic map. Okay, okay, I know. <laughs> well, the Cliffs of Logic. We'll never we'll never get to the Cliffs of Logic at this rate. <laughs> Do the this part yet? I think I can get have a an audience at the castle, but it's just come on, go down so I can no further down. <sighs> there we go. <laughs> Let's see. Alexander pulls out his magic map. His magic snap. <laughs> Nothing beats old games. Actually, I think the Isle of... Oh, Isle of the Sacred Mountains. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. <laughs> they make you lactate. Alexander takes the feather. Alexander picks the... There appears to be something etched. The rock. Huge blocks of stone erupt from the granite <clears throat> cliffs. I'm only solving that one puzzle <laughs> for right now. Alexander stares with wonder. That's quite a way to welcome a guest, if indeed it is a welcome. Uh, There's nothing of... Okay. <laughs> it was just the crown for a long time. Alexander pulls out his magic map. <clears throat> Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Oh yeah, baby. Pulling on that magic snap. This game is kinkier than I thought. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> what? I guess somebody didn't have the instruction manual, like they pirated it or something. You're still too slow. I don't like the fast animation though. Alexander sorts through the odds and ends that the pawn shop owner dumped into the pot. Magic exploding gum wrappers, a shattered crystal ball, a cracked wand, a fake thumb. Hmm. Near the bottom, Alexander finds a little glass bottle labeled ink. It appears to be empty, but Alexander decides to take it anyway. You never know when a small bottle will come in handy. <clears throat> oh, I see. Let's see if we've got everything. Ink. Do we need the feather? No, it's ink, this, mint, that, and that. Okay. We are ready. Let's save it just in case I'm not. <laughs> Whoa, what? I don't remember the save screen looking like that. Medieval times. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. I always thought this island looked like a chicken leg or something. <laughs> Makes me want fried chicken. See if we survive. Alexander hears someone coming. Five fierce guards of the aisle we be. Watch for a foreign man, said he. With ears and nose, tongue, hands, and eyes. Its nature cannot be disguised. If man it be, then man, man it dies. dies. What if he was a woman? Alexander holds the flower of stench out to the gnome with the jumbo nose. Tub troll I am, that's all I'll be. My nose knows all on land and sea. A flower of stench has washed ashore. A flower, tis all, and nothing more. Oh. Listen, hark you, Rovador. Do, Do your, your duty as you swore. With your ears, please, us more. Rover Nor? What the hell is that? No, 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 no. The mechanical... No, select it. Alexander winds the tin nightingale and plays it for the gnome with the monumental ears. Bum, bum, ba, ba. Bum, ba. A nose is not a way to spy. My ears cannot be told a lie. A nightingale is all there be. No man is near, and so say me. Taste, Grump Trump, that we might know whether the friend or whether foe. Oh, yeah, lick me all over. Alexander holds the mint out for the gnome with the gigantic mouth. <laughs> Grumplump knows a tasty treat. 
It matters not what others bleat. No danger is this one so sweet. Trilly dilly, use your hands. Is it beast or is it man? Alexander holds the rabbit foot out for the gnome with the huge hands. Be all you mad? What aileth thee? A bunny can't trill merrily. A hare does not at all taste sweet. A rabbit here is all we greet. Old Bill Batter, never fatter. Vision can resolve this matter. Look you now and end this chatter. Alexander pours the contents of the empty-looking ink bottle over himself. <laughs> By all that's beauteous, fair, and sightly, four morons do I sleep with nightly. There's nothing there at all, I say. Enough of this. Let's now away. Alexander did it. He's fooled the guards. He's fooled the guards. Alexander picks up the object floating in the water. It appears to be a string of letters. They say, where are you going? Alexander decides to keep the odd sentence, even though it is incomplete. Perhaps Alexander should find out more about the oyster first. Never. I care not about this stupid oyster. Why aren't you asleep like the other oysters? Oh, I'm so weary, but I can't sleep. I have a terrible ache in my mouth. If you're having trouble sleeping, perhaps you'd like me to read to you. That would be great! <clears throat> Two dulcimers raised to the degree of 40 half dulcimers divided into equal parts by the third of a cackle of grouse geese put over the result of 10 fine mackles, albeit small fine mackles, stretched over the total of 53 and an eighth bottles of wild beast lard. <clears throat> Alexander makes a grab for the pearl. Oyster drifts into peaceful slumber with the rest of his oyster friends. Yay! A little oyster. Mm, wow! Hiya, gorgeous. What a luscious looking hunk of flesh you are. Uh, thank you. I guess. Who are you? <gasps> How charming of you to pretend not to know. I'm Black Widow, of course. The femme fatale of all femme fatales. Know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I was just thinking it was time I found my 50th, uh, another husband. It would be quite a horror. Uh, I mean, an honor to have me as a bride. Just look at my beautiful weaving. It's so light, so delicate. You'll never want to leave my little nest. Hmm. It is a lovely web, but my heart is elsewhere, I'm afraid. Oh, drat! Uh, <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> the loss is yours. I'm sure you'll change your mind once you consider the advantages. Alexander snatches the scrap of parchment, curious to see what's written on it. Yeah, I recognize her voice. 
the wind blows the scrap of paper from Alexander's hand, but he remembers what it said well enough. That was more for points than anything else, I guess. Why is it playing that one note? Let's leave for a second and come back. <laughs> oh, it stopped. Yay! What do you think you're doing? I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize these books had an owner. I'm in need of a rare book. <laughs> no owner. All books have owners, my good man. And this book owner, bookworm to you, wouldn't part with one of his books for anything. Isn't there something I can do for you to pay for the book? Hmm, let's see. Do you have an itinerant clause? No. No clauses at all, I'm afraid. As an exception, you always should! <laughs> Fuck. Don't mind oxymoron and diphthong. They're fairly limited grammatical principles, you know. Hmm, let's see. A marsh pig that does Texas? Uh, no. I'm afraid not. A dangling participle? I'm fresh out. A purple fiddlewhacker? Oh, he's got one of those. No, I don't think so. Sorry. An <laughs> idiosyncrasy, perhaps? Right not. Ha! Huh, then what good are you? Alright, that did have a purpose. <laughs> Come on. Come on. There we go. <laughs> Dang it, Alexander, what the hell is wrong with you? Now let's go ahead and get some other stuff. Plop, plop, plop. It looks like my mic's hardly picking up my voice. Maybe I'm mumbling, I don't know. I do that! Sorry. Alexander takes a bottle of milk from the milkweed bush. <laughs> Whoa! Apparently, the dogwood tree doesn't like Alexander standing that close. Oh, Rotten Tomato, I love you. Hey! What do you think you're doing there? Get your hands off me! Hey! Alexander picks up Rotten Tomato and puts him away. One never knows when one will need a rotten tomato. Um, I need to come back with the flute. Whoops! Dang it! Wait! I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these cabbages. Alexander picks a head of iceberg lettuce. Ye gads! Is that cold? <laughs> Ye gads! Come on. I probably should have gone in there too, but uh, we'll do that later. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. <clears throat> okay, let's go this way first. Before this melts. There we go. Hoping to cool down the boiling pond, Alexander throws in a head of iceberg lettuce. Pond's water slowly stops boiling, cooled by the ice. It still looks hot, but bearable. Mischief managed. Bop, bop, bop. 
Perhaps Alexander ought to find out. Oh my god, Alexander! Hello, friend. Aren't you an odd looking little fellow? I'm not odd looking, you are! Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize you could speak. Speak not? Funny is, speech I am and nothing but. Alexander holds the sentence out to the creature. This sentence seems in need of an ending. Perhaps you could finish it? Where are you going? Where are you going? Know what I do? Where are you going to? Like you, I do. Go oh, I with, with you. you? No! Throw it into the ocean! <laughs> That was certainly interesting. It looks like Alexander now has a passenger. Cedric did make an appearance. Just the voice. Alexander decides to I guess. brave the steaming pond. I don't know if it was the same voice. Ouch! Ow! Ooh, 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 ouch! The pond is no longer boiling, but it's hardly bathwater. Alexander takes the old hunter's lamp from the tree. As Alexander continues down the path, he gets the strange feeling that he's being watched. Come on over here and see what I'm doing with these flowers. Never mind that stone fella on top of the gate. He won't hurt you any. He's just there to scare you. Come on. You aren't gonna listen to me, are you? Well, we'll just sub that. <laughs> That's odd. The gardener just disappeared. Yeah, he talks like Yoda. <clears throat> he talks in partis participular phrases or something. <clears throat> Participles, part, something. Let's look at him. One end of the creature resembles a miniature dragon, while the other looks like a possum. What a strange-looking fellow! He's cute. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Hello, uh. bookworm. I have something you might be interested in. Well, what is it this time? I found this little fellow lost on another island. Coming home, I am too. There you are, you naughty boy. I told you not to leave the island. Glad I am seeing you too. A most <laughs> solemn celebration. So, you found my dangling participle. I suppose I'll have to give you something. Uh, let's see now. Was it a rare book you wanted? Yes, sir. Well, then none of these will do. They've been sitting in the sun far too long and must be well cooked by now. <laughs> This one is far more rare. A delicious little tidbit. Mm. Uh, thanks. <laughs> R. Alexander is carrying a rare book from the bookworm. 
The words in the binding are very faint. The something something riddle book. Oh yeah, we can look in it. Alexander opens the rare book and looks inside. <laughs> you naughty Yoda. The book contains riddles and has a page missing. Alexander glances at a few of the conundrums, but finds himself more curious about the one that is missing. What was the riddle, he wonders. More importantly, what was the answer? We've already seen the answer. We just haven't heard the riddle yet. Come on. Come on. Oh, God. <laughs> Alex. Thank you. There's no reason to use that object there. What? Alexander pulls out his magic map. You got a booty. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Alexander. We're almost to where we can use the nightingale. <laughs> Go left or do not. Your candy dish is empty. I am sorry, sir, but I have no more mints. Somebody has eaten them all. Well, get some more then. I fear that is impossible. Without the ferry, I can no longer get imports from the other islands, and we do not grow mint extract on the Isle of the Crown. Oh, I hate not getting what I want! <laughs> I found this large pearl. Might it be valuable enough to ransom back my family ring? I have never seen such a perfect pearl. Certainly you can have your ring back. Oh, I'm glad you didn't sell it. I'm a bit attached to it, I'm afraid. <laughs> of course you are. You would be cold-hearted if you felt any differently. I am happy to see a family heirloom back with its rightful owner. <laughs> I never realized how much talking there was. I never get to say anything. I guess this is what I get. <laughs> yes! Hello. I will be right up. Now, what can I do for you? Good day, sir. Is there anything you can tell me about the land of the Green Isles? I'm sorry, <laughs> but I have no time for idle conversation. I'm too worried about the princess. I like that voice actor guy. He's also a, an actual actor. <laughs> I think it's the same guy, I'm not sure. Determined to learn more about the strange man's relationship with the princess, Alexander <laughs> shows the man his insignia ring and formally introduces himself. I'm sorry to insist. But my name is Alexander of Daventry, and... I appreciate the offer of the ring, Alexander, but I'm afraid I'm already spoken. Daventry? <laughs> Where have I heard of Daventry? Flying flit mice. You must be Prince Alexander. Cosima told me about you when she arrived home. How came you here? Why, by a ship, now wrecked upon the sand. But you know Cosima? She truly spoke of me? Yes, yes, I, I saw her briefly when she first returned home. She mentioned a prince to me, a Prince Alexander of Daventry. I'm afraid that was before she was told about her parents' deaths. You see, she arrived home a few weeks too late. The king and queen thought they'd never see her again. It is said they died of heartbreak. I'm afraid she's blamed herself. What a terrible homecoming. If we had only known... <laughs> Terrible indeed, poor thing. 
Everyone in the kingdom seems to despair with her these days. The streets are silent. Where is she now? The princess is sequestered in mourning. It's a rather dated tradition and not required, but the wazir says she insisted out of respect. I see. You've yet to say who you are and how you know the princess. I? Oh, pardon me. My name is Chalo. I am clown to the royal court and had been since the marriage of Cosima's parents, King Caliphon and Queen Alaria. Oh, those were the happy days. The pair of them were so full of joy and life, so in love. And Aww. Cosima's birth. It would be hard to explain how long they had waited, how they had hoped for a child. I mean, she was such a charming little thing, smart as a whip, kind and sweet. Oh, she means everything to this kingdom, Alexander, and to me. I'm so terribly worried about her. About her grief over her parents, you mean? Well, the truth is, I do not trust the wazir or his plans for Cosima. I'm still living at the castle of the crown as court clown, his clown. But it is more to keep my ear to the ground than out of loyalty. I wish I knew what the princess thinks these days. <sighs> if only I could find Sing Sing, Cosima's pet nightingale, I might be able to send the princess a message. As it is, I must wait for the end of her seclusion. What can you tell me about the wazir? The wazir? <laughs> now there's a dangerous subject. His name is Abdul al Hazreth. He came to the kingdom 15 years ago. The king was fascinated by his knowledge and his fine-sounding ideas. It didn't take long for al Hazred to convince the king to trust him with the minor problems of daily government. You see, Caliphim had a wife and a new daughter he wanted to spend time with. al Hazred became wazir. And now? Well, he's had his eye on Cosima ever since she was a young girl. And she is the only thing between him and the throne. Do you think he means to harm her? Oh, I honestly don't know. I think he'd rather keep her as wife, but whatever his plans for the princess, he will use her to his best advantage. That's his way. Perhaps he has charmed her. Perhaps she cares for him now. The wazir is capable of anything, and Cosima must be vulnerable and lonely right now. Still, she has always instinctively distrusted him. Cosima has a good head on her shoulders. I'd be surprised if she's truly fallen for his words of love. Now I must return to the castle. Look, I don't want to arouse suspicion. I'll try to meet you here again later. Thank you for the information, Jalo. Be very careful. Ah, oh, so much talking. And there will be more. I found this rare book. And I thought of your offer. Very interesting. Oh, it is a wonderful riddle book. Riddles are much more marketable than spells these days. I guess people believe more in mirth than in magic. Here is the spell book you wanted. And a fair trade it is, I must say. Enjoy it. I certainly hope so. We shall see how rusty my spell casting truly is. <laughs> we can talk to the Rotten Tomato. What do you want from me? A recitation or something? Leave me alone! <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're ugly and you smell bad. You're ugly and you smell bad! <laughs> yeah! Put me down, down for it. You saw all over you. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> You're ugly and you smell bad. Yeah. I'm going to save it before doing the Nightingale stuff because it's kind of iffy. I think here I saved it there too. Um, what do we have? Let's see, we still have the Nightingale, right? Pretty sure we do. <clears throat> Alexander.
Alexander winds the mechanical nightingale and places it on the ground. The mechanical nightingale sings a sweet, tinny tune. The real nightingale in the tree cocks her head and listens intently. The nightingale flies to a lower branch and looks at Alexander curiously, as if she were deciding that this human might not be so bad. All right, we had to give it the ring first. We never get the ring back after doing this, so <laughs> this is why I. This is something I'm always forgetting to give it to Jalo to be able to talk to him because I'm always in such a rush to give it to the nightingale. <laughs> I don't know why, but I finally remembered. Alexander holds out his insignia ring to the nightingale, hoping she perhaps is the nightingale that Jalo spoke of, and that she might be able to take the ring to Cosima. The ring is the one thing he has that might alert Cosima to his presence on the Isles. The nightingale swoops down and grabs the ring. She flies off towards the castle, perhaps to Cosima. Sing, sing. What have you got in your mouth, my pretty? A gold ring? <gasps> sing, sing. Where did you get this? Realm of Daventry. But this is Alexander's ring. Oh, my soul, he must be here. Sing, sing, I wish you could tell me what you've seen. Is he really here then, on this very island? Oh, if only I could leave this castle as easily as you. Take this ribbon, Sing, sing. If you know where he is, return it to him. Please be careful, Alexander. It is so dangerous, and yet I could not wish you away. <clears throat> Yay! The little bird makes a delivery. There are a couple things we can send back with the nightingale. It's a red velvet hair ribbon. Could it be? Could it possibly belong to Cosima herself? Or am I merely wishing it were so? Oh. Aww. Um, <laughs> but for some reason, it doesn't play any of the scenes of Cosima after this. Um, I, you know, I haven't tried with the rose, but we're not gonna give her a rose. I think once you, we give her the poem, She'll tell Sing Sing never to see him again. Let's save it again. You know what? I don't want to oversave that. So. Let's just go ahead and get better. Poem. Alexander holds out the love poem, hoping that the bird will deliver it to the same place she took the ring, in the chance that the receiver might truly be Cosima. <laughs> the nightingale <laughs> swoops down, grabs the love poem, and takes it towards the castle. Yay! Oh, it does! Yay! Sing, sing, my sweet! You bring another present! Let me see. It is a poem, Sing Sing. What was it when I looked at you? What power has chained me through and through and binds my heart with links so tight I cannot live without the sight of you? Oh, Alexander. I was hoping he'd return to you. Take this to him while he waits. Hurry, my fleet one. Right. The little bird makes a delivery. How it used to be is the nightingale would pick up the 
the poem, fly away, and then it would just be on this screen the whole time, and I would have to leave and come back for Sing Sing to bring me the stuff back. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's a note. Dearest Alexander, I cannot believe you are here, my friend. Please, please be careful. Abdul isn't about to let anyone interfere with his plans. Watch out for Abdul's genie, Alexander, and do not do anything rash. I am not without resources, and I will prevail if I can only find some small means of defense. Do nothing to try to get to me. You must not be endangered again for my sake. Greatly in your family's debt, Kasima. Alexander's hand trembles as he reads the note. For the first time in his long search, he has heard her voice again, if only in writing. No words of love, only friendly concern. Friend. Is the maiden merely shy, or does she regard him only as a brother? Alright. In King's Quest 7, there's this one chapter where you get... <laughs> where you get, um... You pick up dynamite, and it is supposed to explode at random intervals just to be an asshole. Uh, it, sometimes it doesn't give you enough time to go where you need to go and just explode. But the bug I've been running into is as soon as I get it, it explodes. And because I never used the bookmark feature, it would load my save, still holding the explosives, and then explode again, so it's just an endless cycle of dying and <laughs> reloading and dying. Oh, it makes me so angry. Uh, but we can come back and give her a flower, but I think the flower is when she says not to come, not to, she tells Sing Sing not to come back. The lady's hair ribbon is made of the finest red velvet. A long strand of black hair is caught in the ribbon. Alexander examines the red ribbon and finds a strand of long black hair. Right. And maybe we really won't get to the Cliffs of Logic. <laughs> There's one more thing I need to do before I go there. Or two or three things. Actually. Good day, Prince Alexander. Good day. We do not need the nightingale anymore. Would you mind if I traded this in? Of course, Prince Alex. Please, choose something in exchange for the items on the counter. Alexander looks closely at the items on the counter to make his selection. It would be my luck. <laughs> I'll take the flute. The flute? Very good, Prince Alex. May its music always be sweet. Feel free to trade it back at any time. Thank you. But uh, the next chapter to the new King's Quest game is coming out, I think it's at the 15th of this month. So I'm super excited. Uh, <laughs> I'll stream it once it releases. So I'm playing this game just... I don't know, preparing myself, I guess. I don't know. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Pulls out his magic map. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. That pulling sensation. Pulls out his magic snap. I'm <laughs> being teased for the new stuff. Uh... <gasps> the teacup. I don't remember which. Alexander takes the teacup. Which vessel needs the baby's tears? But I guess we will find out. Well, 
Let's do that later. Uh, I don't want to listen to their crying while everyone's dancing. <laughs> Maybe that would actually be kind of funny. <laughs> I had to walk up. Checkmate! Only chess pieces allowed in chessboard land. That's right. Humans aren't allowed in and never will be. Stay out! Hmm. Oh, there they are. I must insist, Your Highness. I shall send the lump of coal to the Wizier and the Princess as a present for their wedding, and that's the end of it. And I suppose you'll leave me with only this stupid spoiled egg to send, Your Highness? I want to impress the new king and queen of the realm as much as you do. As queen of this island, I have every right to that lump of coal. Who isn't queen of this isle? The lump of coal is in my possession. Therefore, I shall do as I please with it. Besides, there's nothing wrong with that spoiled egg. The egg, though delightfully spoiled, is not nearly so valuable as the lump of coal, and you know it. Your Highness always got to carry the Singing Stone. It's not fair that you get the coal, too. That doesn't count. The Singing Stone was stolen by that horrid beast. I should get to keep the coal just because my stone was stolen. It wasn't your stone. It belonged to the Isle of Wonder Treasury. Your Highness always thinks that everything is hers. Excuse me, my good man, but could you settle an argument for us? Which of us should get to carry the coal and which the egg? Remember, white is the color of deserving truth and virtue. Quiet, your highness, and let him make up his own mind. I, for one, shall be more proper and not even mention the fact that red is the color of love. I'm sorry, Your Majesties. I'm partial to both red and white, but I'm afraid that I don't know how to solve your problem. One of you will just have to be gracious and allow the other the lump of coal. What a ridiculously stupid <laughs> idea. Quite ludicrous. He was a lot of help, wasn't he? Oh, yes. Obviously a man of high intelligence. The lump of coal goes much better with my gown anyway. Black and red are imperial colors. That's the silliest thing I ever heard. Red does not go with anything, being much too self-conscious. White is the perfect accompaniment to any color. Alexander picks up the Red Queen's scarf. <clears throat> Yay! Stealing clothes. Oops. Ah, oh, dang. Alright, let's make the babies cry and then everyone sing and dance. I don't think I've ever done it before. This will be interesting. Alexander gives one of the baby's tears a bottle of milk. <laughs> the other baby's tears seem to resent Alexander's gift for some reason. Alright, which one? I don't think it's the teacup. I think it's this. Alexander collects some of the baby's tears in the old hunter's lamp. Would you lovely flowers be interested in this? Guess not. Oh. Uh, let's try to grab Alexander this. Alexander decides to pick up the hole in the wall. 
a hole in the wall could be a very useful thing. Alexander startled the poor thing. It's run off to hide behind the wallflowers. May I have this dance? Oh, my! <laughs> they stop crying? Aww. Alexander stops playing the flute, but the wallflowers and snapdragons continue to dance, caught up in the music and oblivious to everything around them. While the wallflowers dance, Alexander snatches the hole in the wall. <laughs> gotcha! Oh, they continue to cry. <laughs> Once it's over. <laughs> A whistling band. I just really love to whistle. Sometimes I just do it without even thinking. Um, let's see. We've almost got everything. I think we just need one more thing. Actually, well... We can do well this is a long talking let's do this another time we don't need to do this part yet my oldest brother is the best at whistling he's really good I've already grabbed a cabbage I did that part earlier see I've got the uh, I've already got the hunter's lamp and the brick which you need the cabbage to get that but thank you for uh trying to remind me <laughs> I played this game a million times Alexander so. pulls out <clears throat> his magic map Let's see we need to pick up Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation And how are you doing Red Bull I could have picked up another one, let it melt in my pocket. <laughs> Good day, Prince Alexander. Uh, no, There's not no this. Point in you no, not that. A flute. <laughs> Would you mind if I traded this in? Of course, Prince Alex. Please, choose something in exchange for the items on the counter. Alexander looks closely at the items on the counter to make his selection. Yeah, I really love this game. It's my favorite out of all of the King's Quest games. I've played all of them. Uh, but I like 5 and 7 also. And then the rest, I, I don't like them as much. <laughs> I believe I'll take the tinderbox. Very good, Prince Alex. Enjoy your tinderbox and bring it back anytime. Thank you. Alright, let me make sure I've got everything. Let's see, I've got the hole in the wall, the brick, and I think the tinderbox is the only other thing I need. Oh, and this thing, I've got that thing. The scarf. Five's your favorite. It's a good one. Um, let's go ahead and save. And I'll do the Cliffs of Logic up until... Although I don't think I can do the next puzzle without the manual. I'll have to look up the manual. 
when I get to it. Alexander pulls out his magic map. And I'm looking at the manual. I'm not going to pull up a, uh, a cheat that tells me the answer. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. The steps cannot be moved any further backwards or forwards. I wasn't trying to do that. I just want you to stand on it. Am I off? I'm not off just yet. I got a couple. Whenever Ranfuba's done at work is when I stop streaming. And he usually gets off in about 20 minutes, but... I'm going to do the Cliffs of, Lo of Logic as far as I can. Um, I was just saying I'm going to just quickly pull up the manual. Because I don't have the physical one anymore. This was a digital version that I'm playing. Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. Master of Languages will, and I know it's sore, but this is a, an alphabet that I've got to look up. Some of the answers I, I, uh, I remember the answers, but because it's a, a special alphabet, I can't do it. This quest six manual. Uh, oh, good, it's got this here. S. Where's this? Uh, it looks like a man stretching out. Oh. That looks like my husband. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, hey, is it this one? Yeah, it is. R. Looks like a bird. The stone beneath Alexander's feet trembles as more steps emerge from the granite cliffs. A decipherer. <laughs> and I've got to save after every puzzle because I might actually fall off the cliff. <laughs> He's not very agile. I don't know how Alexander does this. I would be peeing in my pants before or while falling off the cliff. <laughs> this one, even though ugh, I have the poem, I always forget Which one it is. I think he had to push them Alexander in order. Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. Actually, can I... Uh, I can't... Uh... Nothing happens. Okay, good. The cliffs... Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna actually accidentally kill myself just trying to save. Right. Now let me find the poem for this. I found a picture of just the alphabet. I've got to find the actual poem. Oh, here it is. Uh, Boy, 
four men standing in a row, third from the left, and down you go. The rest in order move you on. The youngest, the oldest, and the second son. So, let's see. Third from the left. We can't push it, because we'll die. Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. So it's one, two, three. If we can't push this one, it'll kill us. So we gotta go... Like this? Do I have to push this one? I don't... what? I don't want to push it. Alexander gets Damn it. Well, let's go ahead and watch the, uh... The death scene. Oops! Ba -ba -ba -ba. Dickens! Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh. Next! Ba -ba -ba -bum. What a riddle. Stones of stealth. Find a guide to keep your health. Alright. Alexander examines <laughs> the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. I've just got to figure out which one's... Is this the youngest? Or is this the youngest, the oldest, and the second son? The stone there we go. Alexander's feet trembles <laughs> I had it backwards. <laughs> emerge from the granite cliffs. Always have problems with that one. We do get to venture to the underworld. <laughs> it's part of the long, the long, uh, playthrough. It's my favorite place to go. Oh, he does that by himself. What a big boy! I think this is the last of the weird alphabet. Save. Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. Uh, the sacred four. There's no order to this one, I don't think. We just have to, um, see. I've just got to find the page that tells me the sacred four. Here? Oh. Let's try this one. Come on. In oh, <laughs> inspired my career choice. No, it didn't. Uh, on. Maybe this will tell me. Oh. Tranquility. Color azure. Caterpillar in the element of air. So, let's do this again. Get back to the alphabet. I think it's copyright protection. <laughs> uh, it's terrible quality. Alright, so we need tranquility. Each uh, symbol of the alphabet has um, certain... It has a color, an animal, 
an element and I don't know what the what you would call the fourth thing. So I've got to find each one. Quillity, this rook-looking one is one. Uh. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Not on here. Oh, here it is. Here. What was the color? I've already forgotten the color. <laughs> Brown wood, clay. We still need caterpillar and whatever the color was. Oh, azure. Here it is. My husband again. <laughs> and caterpillar. Here we go. That's an incision looking thing. The stone thing. beneath Alexander's feet trembles as more steps emerge from the granite cliffs. Alright, that should be the last one. Save. <laughs> do do, do do, do 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 do. I used to have nightmares about this part of the game. Catcher killers? <laughs> oh wait. Oh, what is this one? Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. Oh. The stone beneath Alexander's feet trembles as more steps emerge from the granite cliffs. And that should be the last of all the puzzles. I hope. Um... There's a voice in the underground, or Death's Realm, or whatever you want to call it. Oh, and I love his voice so much. It makes me cry that he's dead. In real life, he's dead. Yay! Alexander finds himself, finally, at the top of the cliffs. Exhausted, he steps over the lip of the plateau and stands. Why do you make such an effort to climb the cliffs, young man? The winged ones who live on this island have the power of flight. You could have it too, if you'd only eat a berry from this magical flying nightshade bush. <laughs> See? The sweet berries will make you float like a petal on the wind. <laughs> Try some. I really oh, like his right voice. Then. Stay tied to the ground like a load of lead. See if I care. You, 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 human. Human. How odd. The old woman just disappeared in a cloud of smoke. <laughs> Perhaps those berries are even more powerful than she led Alexander to believe. <laughs> Jeez, what a bitch! Look, an intruder! Hold! How did you get up here, human? Here, man! the cliffs. Who does he that think he is? is? not possible. No one has solved the cliffs of logic in several centuries. And if the cliffs were to be solved, it would certainly not be by a human. I... I didn't mean to trespass. 
I only wanted to visit this beautiful island. No visitors have been welcome on the Isle of the Sacred Mountain in years. Not since the Red and White Queens had spies in the guise of friendly visitors steal our island's sacred golden fleece. But we will not display such foolish trust again. You will have to answer to Lord Azure and Lady Ariel. They will determine what will be done with you. I can assure you, it will not be pleasant. Aw. <laughs> mm, I don't know why these have voices. But for whatever reason, it doesn't do the voices here. With what trickery did you master the cliffs of logic and reach the city of the winged ones? I have no idea why they don't do their voices. Only the magic of clear thought, my lord. I meant no harm. <laughs> Hi, Drover. How are you doing? And yeah, poor Alexander. The Cliffs of Logic? It's the Sacred Oracle's Prophecy, Azure. Yes, Ariel. Hmm. It is lucky for you, human, that climbing the Cliffs of Logic is part of a prophecy I cannot ignore. We have just been ordered by Vizier al Hazred himself to dispose of any strangers that might land on our fair isle. But the prophecy would have a different fate befall you. Good, I'm glad you're doing well. The prophecy predicts that whosoever climbs the Cliffs of Logic will defeat the Minotaur. The Minotaur has violated our sacred catacombs and eats our young in sacrifice. Our own daughter, Lady Celeste, has uh, was taken there only this morning as his most recent demanded offering. A dilemma, then. Whom shall I obey in regards to your fate? The Oracle or the Crown? But since al Hazred did not dictate how I was supposed to dispose of intruders, and since you cannot possibly survive the catacombs, your imprisonment there should serve both purposes quite admirably. I will not resist you in this, my lord. I shall do my best to save your daughter. <clears throat> First, I must tell you that the catacombs are a labyrinth of rooms, a place of exceeding danger. You will need many tools and clear wits to survive it. You don't like Lady Celeste? <laughs> she is rather rude. Oops, clicked outside of the window. I am ready. Very well, my guards will take you there now. You seem courageous enough, but the catacombs will determine how brave you really are. If we're not ready, he'll ask to be taken uh, back to the beach to get ready. And it is possible to come back when you're not ready, and they will just take you straight to the catacombs and you're stuck. <laughs> You'll have to say load a save. I've done it before. Why did you tell Lord Azure you were ready and willing to face the catacombs? No one is ever ready, and only a fool could be willing. And you are far wiser, I suppose, to leave a maiden to die? To not fight this plague on your own people? Bravery and suicide are two different things, human. You will have a chance to renounce your choice soon enough when you lay trembling under the Minotaur's hooves. We shall see. Thanks for the escort. We only escort you to your death. May the fates make it quick so that you do not have to scream long. <laughs> Let's make Alexander suffer. The catacomb's entrance door is locked from the outside by the winged one's guards. It seems that leaving the catacombs by that door is not an option. There is a maze of the catacombs in the manual, but I will not use it. I don't think I need it. I've been able to navigate the catacombs without dying for a long time. But after saying that, I bet you I will die. I don't know why I didn't have their voiceovers. Uh, they do have voices. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the only part in this version where they don't have the voices. I don't understand why. Yeah, that's the first time I had to read. Tickets. 
please. Uh. Alexander sees nothing of interest on the floor. What? Alexander's a moron. Alexander picks up the skull. Come on. Come on. I hate windowed mode. And the arrow keys will not go any lower than that. Come on. Ugh. <sighs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> what the hell? I can't fucking click. I'm going to murder you out. I'm just going to purposefully walk into a room with a trap in it. Oh my god. <laughs> Let me move um this. Alright. Alright, there we go. Maybe it doesn't like me being on this side. The reason why I click here is because I have OBS down right here and if I clicked out of the window then I would accidentally stop streaming. Alexander hears the distant sounds of a wild animal somewhere in the maze of rooms. So I moved OBS over here instead. Well, maybe I should just... I'm just gonna minimize it. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to try to do this without the the riddle. There's a riddle for this room, which makes it way too easy. Uh. No! Alexander feels the tile he's standing Is it this on one? shift beneath I think it his feet. Was, this was the last one. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. Ba 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 ba. Tickets. Oh. It's not a cheat. Next. Three spikes a, and you're out. It's not a cheat. It's a poem that you're supposed to read to get out to get through it. And I'm doing it from memory. I'm not looking at anything. It must have been the skull. There's nowhere else I could go. Yeah. Damn skull. Alright, now let's save again. Do a new save. Uh oh. Ah, you were a human only and not the monster himself. I heard you coming and thought you were the beast. Did my father send you here to save me? Why, yes he did, but how did you- Hush, there is no time. I think I have discovered the Minotaur's secret exit from the catacombs. Follow me and we'll both be saved. Of course, when I tell you I can do it perfect. It's been forever since I've seen that scene. That's a trapped room that she goes into. Oh, here's the shield. Alexander takes the shield from the wall. Lady Celeste voice act. That's actually not her real voice. Of course, Alexander doesn't know that. <laughs> but 
but you guys will hear what she sounds like. She sounds terrible. This is an easily Alexander finds two coins on the skeleton's eyes. He takes the old coins. This is very easily missed, and if you don't do this, you can't finish the game. Or at least not the, the hard way. The long, hard way. Long and hard way. The only way. <laughs> only good way. Come on, please don't do this. <laughs> there we go. Uh... Let's get this ready. I think... I think there's a way to use... This instead of the brick. Small. The skull, but... I don't... I think it'll break the skull. Which we don't want to happen. It's a trap. The doors have sealed Alexander inside. And the ceiling is coming down. This actually terrified me as a child. Uh, being squished like this is like my one of my worst fears, and I don't know why. In a desperate move, Probably because of this game. <laughs> brick into the grinding gears. Yeah. <laughs> the brick is caught between two cogs. The gears shriek and shudder. The mechanism grinds to halt. The ceiling is stuck. The trap is sprung. Yay! Yeah, it's a scary idea. <laughs> there's a lot of adventure games that have made me really scared of ways to die. Like, there's this game called The Return of the Phantom of the Opera. And one of the rooms, in, there's like a catacombs under the opera house. And one of the rooms is like, you have to solve this puzzle before you burn to death. And that scared the hell out of me for a long time. Terrified of being cremated? That's a pretty good fear. <laughs> uh, I almost spelled cremated. Uh, is this three or four? Uh, who cares? Tomb Raider, yeah. A lot of ways to die that way. Something... Uh, we never knew there was a map in the manual, and our way of knowing which rooms were safe was the Alexander animals. Here's a low growling, so faint as to seem born of his fired imagination rather than of any living creature. The animals will not enter a room with a trap in it. I think the bats will, but not the rats. And this part here is one of my... I hate this death, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys it. Just be I like it, because it's cool, but I don't know. It's what happens if... Oh, we were on three. Yeah. So what happens if far off into the catacombs Stop. The sounds of hooves faintly echo <sighs> if you don't have the tinder box or take too long to, to light it sounds a trap floor <laughs> Alexander seems to have fallen to a lower level of the catacombs. Wherever he is, the place sure is dark. Alexander can't even see his hand in front of his face. Let's see what happens. Alex 
bartender hears the scrabble of hooves in the dark room. Hey, hello?